Friends, as we dive into our third week of Better Together, I wanted to give you another chance to hear uh, from some of our staff this time. It's actually from myself and Pastor Cheryl uh, about how your investment helps this community do ministry together. I serve as the senior associate pastor here at Grace, as well as overseeing the Common Grace worshiping community. I love being able to do both of those pieces together to, to help do some of the administration side of running a, a big organization like ours, uh, of helping us meet our mission and our vision, and also uh, getting to do life on life ministry in the Common Grace community and, and reach out to those around us and invite them into the experience of Grace. It is my privilege to support and help people discern the presence of God and the movement of the Spirit in their lives uh, during times of joy, during times of transition, when they are seeking and searching, as well as in times of deep loss and sorrow. When people um, come to Grace and seek to join the church or are visiting the church, I will meet with them to hear their faith story, to identify their their gifts and their passions, and then try to connect those gifts and passions into the life and the ministry of the church. When the pandemic hit, obviously nobody had any idea what was going on, and it took a lot of adaptation from our staff, uh, as well as from all of our congregants. One of the things that we saw, and we were even maybe a little bit surprised by, was the continued investment of our community, as we had to adjust on the fly and uh, um, purchase new equipment and support new staff and move into entirely new realms of doing ministry. Uh, none of that would have been possible without the continued faithfulness of our community and those who are in and trusting us uh, to continue to carry this, this word, this good news to the world. During the pandemic, the ongoing financial support of the church enabled us to connect with the congregation first through online worship. In my area of ministry, with the help of volunteers and Caring Connection ministers, we made over 1,100 calls um, trying to connect with church members, checking in on them, seeing if there was anything that the church could do to support them, asking if there were prayer concerns or prayer needs and also reminding them of online worship. I want us to grow in our ability to tell our story, uh, to invite other people into community, to let people know that this is a safe space where they can grow in their faith, where their uh, families can grow together, where they can feel supported, where they can invest, where they can give, uh, where they can uh, experience that life that is truly life. Those are the things that I get excited about as we move into the future. As we move into 2022, your ongoing financial support enables us to provide new ways for people to grow in their faith um, through retreats, through workshops like the Expressive Art Workshop through small groups um, and classes that help us to explore spiritual practices and through holding events that um, creatively use the labyrinth as a spiritual tool. Finally, I want to say that I appreciate the generosity and support of the church. It is a honor and a joy to serve here and to be part of your um, ongoing faith story. Friends, thank you for investing in this community and allowing us uh, to share the good news with those around us. It is so appreciated. Uh, you help make all of this happen and we are better together. This morning for our scriptures, we continue in 1 Corinthians and we're gonna jump back to chapter three. And I want you to hear these words of Paul uh, trying to remind the church at Corinth uh, who it is that they worship and uh, what is most important. It is not him, it is not Apollos, it's not anybody who's been in ministry with the people in Corinth. It's God who does the work. Hear these words. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe and the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollos waters, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That is the foundation of Jesus Christ. 
And then we go back to Matthew's gospel. We've been uh, reading last week in the Sermon on the Mount, and these are Jesus's final words that speak to all that he's been talking about in this sermon. We'll unpack that a little bit more as we go through the message. This is verse 24 of chapter seven. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it was founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine, but does not act on them will be like a foolish person who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell. And how great was its fall. Now then Jesus had finished saying these things. The crowds became astonished at his teaching for he taught as one having authority, not as their scribes. May God add blessing to our reading and understanding of all of these words today. This week, I was reflecting on some mission trip experiences that I had. And you know, a good mission trip, when it's done well, feels sort of like those home remodeling TV shows, you know, uh, trading spaces or extreme home makeover, that sort of thing. Uh, it's very similar, except it doesn't have $200,000 worth of camera equipment and Ty Pennington doesn't fly in on a helicopter. Beyond that, very much the same. You're working under a crunch with limited resources. For us, it's limited knowledge of maybe the work that we're doing. And you're trying to make things happen, make them look good, give them a strong foundation so they'll last. All of that is happening. Now, what can happen though in mission trip is because you're under that crunch and because you're in a place that isn't your own and that you probably won't go back to, it can become easy to sort of phone it in, to, to cut corners, to um, keep it at arm's length, not to get too invested and, and not really to do it right. That cutting corners can, it can be costly in the long run. I've loved that we as a church community from the time I was a youth participating in mission trips to my time as a sponsor to, to now as, as Jeff leads our youth and they go on mission trips each summer and work within the city. Our, our church has always been known for not doing that, for not cutting corners, for taking seriously the work that we do. And I really, really appreciate it. But I remember this one time that we came in after another group and we were told that we were gonna be uh, working in this lady's house and uh, they needed some new paint in the, in the bathroom and a little bit of wall repair work uh, because an earlier group had come in and replaced the floor and fixed the toilet that was linking. So we went in and I remember walking into the, to the bathroom and feeling how spongy the floor was. And I thought, oh goodness, this isn't going to be good. And so I said, um, could we maybe take a look under? So we went under the house into the crawl space. And to be honest with you, I don't know how, in, how no one had fallen through uh, that bathroom because uh, the subfloor was pretty well rotted and the joists were rotted. So they were, there, there's not much support there. So that job that I thought would be a couple of people for a couple of days and our students would work on turned into a whole group of people working together, tearing out the, the new floor and, and the toilet and the sink and uh, sort of replacing everything, putting in a subfloor, redoing the joists, all of that so that it could have a strong and a lasting foundation. Uh, friends, we know that a foundation is important, that we need that solid in order to build something uh, that lasts. We know that cutting corners is always gonna cost us in the long run. And we know that that phrase that uh, if you wanna go fast, you can go alone, but if you wanna go far, we're better together. All of this is true in life. And it's also true in our faith. Sometimes we're tempted to sort of phone it in, uh, to call it in, let somebody else do faith for us. We can be uh, tempted to, to let somebody else handle all of that. And the reason that we get tempted to do that is the same reason that happens on, on mission trips. You're under a time crunch. Uh, we know that we have our attention and our energy and our resources being asked of us in all sorts of directions. And so it can become really easy to just kind of uh, check out and put faith on the back Burner. I think Jesus knows that. And I think that's why at the end of this Sermon on the Mount teaching, he says these words. Over the last several chapters, he's been talking about a new way to be human, turning everything upside down on its head and inviting people to, to live into a, a truer life that he's inviting us into relationship with him, to look at the world differently. That's what these, all of these chapters are about. It's the longest sermon in Matthew's gospel. It's so detailed and lays out the vision Jesus has for us as we live together. He comes to the end of it and he says, those who hear what I say and do it 
are like a wise person who builds on a solid foundation. Notice that's a two part proposition. We hear, we reflect, we receive, and then we do, we act, we implement. We have to have both of those pieces. And here's the deal, because we're pulled in so many directions, oftentimes when it comes to our faith, we end up being one kind of a person or another. Uh, maybe we're really into our personal devotional life or, or small group life together. We, we read our Bible, we spend time in prayer. We take that very, very seriously. Or maybe we take very seriously the action part. If anybody needs help, I'm there to help. If we can serve at the center of grace or go on a mission trip or, or, or work with the children on Sunday mornings, if we can do a weeding project or add a granite to the uh, uh, labyrinth at the church, whatever it is, call me, I'm there. But most of us tend to be skewed one way or the other. It depends on the personality and the person, but, but we can tend to kind of uh, put our faith on a back burner. And that's why I think this call of Jesus is so important. We want to build on a solid foundation and that requires both listening and reflecting and hearing as well as doing and acting. We need both of those things together. Notice what he uses as a metaphor too, the, the building. And so uh, there's two parts to that. On a solid foundation, which we read in Corinthians is, is Jesus himself. Uh, God's work through Jesus, the grace that's offered to us, the teachings, all of all the things that Jesus has been teaching in this uh, Sermon on the Mount, all of that is that rock that we build upon. The second piece of it is that it's building. It's a process. It never happens overnight. It's always going to take uh, time and effort and intention. And that's what Jesus says is the correct way for us to live. If you were gonna build on rock in the first century, think about it. You couldn't go rent heavy equipment to, to bore down into it. You were gonna have to carve into it slowly. It was gonna take exponentially more time. But Jesus says a life that's intentionally crafted in that way, where we put in the time and the effort, where we, we seek to be hearers and doers, that's the life that will withstand the storms. That's true for you individually, and that's true for us as a community, as we seek uh, to discern how it is that God's leading us. We do that through prayer and reflection and conversation. We do that through the scriptures and messages. We do that through meditation. There's all kinds of ways that that listening and discernment happens. And then we seek to put that into practice every single day of our lives. We need the wisdom that comes from all of that reflection uh, to trust that God will lead us where we can't see. Friends, that trust is called faith. And on that foundation of God's work among us, we're called to build together by faith. So in this season called stewardship that we're doing this October, we're inviting you to consider how you might invest as a part of the way that we're doing that process, that building with one another. So this church is a steady foundation on which we get to build. Here's what I mean. God has been working in this community for 160 years. We at Common Grace are a part of the, the Grace community that used to be Hope United Methodist Church and First United Methodist Church and has gone for generation and generation and generation in this city. This church is a foundation, has a firm foundation because over that time, the faithfulness and reflection and prayer and investment and work that people have put in has been blessed and guided by God. And in the midst of all that, God has forged a stronger foundation than we ever could have built with our own wisdom, with our own hands, with our own skills. God works in the midst of that. We'll unpack that a little bit in Corinthians. But, but this, this church has been in in this community for a long time. And so when we invest and when we continue to build, not only on the foundation, but on the, the layers and layers that have built generation after generation, we can trust that that's a good and a strong and a firm foundation. I love that. And I know that that's true because this is a church that survived two global pandemics, that survived uh, two uh, world wars, that's survived so many changes in culture and reality and has constantly evolved and transformed to continue to bring hope and grace and good news and share the message of God with those all around us. 
So when we get to be a part of this, I consider that to be a blessing. And I consider that to be the way that we move into that yet to be known future. So, so building then is a, a task that we do collectively, trusting that the rock on which we build will guide us. And that is God's work through this community for so many years that it will guide us into a wisdom deeper than we can find by ourselves. Uh, I love that Jesus takes us who are imperfect and broken and the gifts that we offer and turns them into something good and beautiful. A couple of weeks ago, we had that groundbreaking or the, the, the ribbon cutting at the center of grace as we opened that new building. And I got to see Pastor Sylvia the week before it happened. And uh, she had that, that glow of joy and excitement as well as exhaustion from all that's going on and that work that she's doing. But she said something that stuck with me. She said, as we expand and grow and transform and change, and we prepare to make these changes in order to serve our community uh, for, for the future, I give thanks that we're building on a firm foundation on the faithfulness of generations of people who have invested that have made this place a possibility. After the groundbreaking, I had a, uh, somebody who I'm very close to and has been a, a member of this church for a long time who said, you know, if it was up to me, I probably wouldn't have kept that building in the 90s when, when it looked like it wasn't going to go for as much money as we thought. I would have said, just cut the losses, get rid of it. And how great is it that that didn't happen? I'm so grateful as I see the work that's happening. Uh, and that's a good and beautiful thing. Friends, that's one of the ways that God works in that hearing, that listening, that discerning, that communal work is we come together. And, and, and what happens is that God takes those offerings. Nobody at that time could imagine how that place would affect the heartbeat of our church community. Nobody could affect how that would, could, could guess how that would affect the heartbeat of our city. Uh, but we simply built the next layer and let God bless, let God provide the growth and lead us into a future. Another person who was at that, that uh, uh, ribbon cutting said, watching the children run in as they went to their new building, as they came off the buses, uh, seeing the joy on their face and the anticipation and expectation as they came to be at the Boys and Girls Club that afternoon, that alone was worth the investment. And, and I just, I love that picture. None of us could have known that, could have known what was going to happen. We simply do do our part to build and trust that God is going to do something with that. How good it is then for us to see what God does with builders who are willing to hear and invest and listen and discern and trust and act and work on behalf of what God is doing. What a blessing it is to see where the road leads. When we share in that work, when we share in that ministry, we get to find our place in the story. And that's part of what 1 Corinthians is talking about. Uh, Apollos waters, uh, Paul plants, somebody else tills, somebody weeds. All of this happens, but do you know what? God is the one who provides the work. Each of us has a role and a specific place that we get to play. We've already seen in, in Corinthians that we're all a part of a body. We saw that in Ephesians a couple of months ago. We all have something to give. We all have something to offer. Uh, each one of us is important. None of us can say that another is unimportant or isn't valued. All of us have something to give. And when we give that, when we build that, when we invest together and work together, God provides growth that is somehow greater than the sum of all of its parts. So we read a couple of weeks ago that Paul was telling the Corinthians to work for the common good. And today he says, each one of us does our part for the common purpose. I love that thread that runs through uh, 1 Corinthians. I want to draw, draw our attention to the second paragraph of what Paul is talking about. He, first of all, he says, According to the grace given to him or according to the grace given to us, each one of us uh, is, is given the opportunity to build on the foundation that's been provided. We steward our gifts and our resources. Even the foundation that God has given is a gift. So we get to steward that. Like we said before, unity isn't something we have to attain. It's something we maintain. All of this to say that each of us gets to build on that foundation, gets to maintain what God has already given but there's a, a warning or a thought in the midst of that as well. Each builder must choose with care how it is that they build. And friends, that's my invitation to you today. This week, as we talk in this uh, Better Together series, specifically about how you might financially invest in this community, and we talk about that financial community component and plan for the year ahead, 
I want you to be thoughtful and considerate. I want you not to feel rash, uh, make a rash decision or be rushed. I want you to, to count the cost and consider the opportunity to help build in an unknown future together. Uh, we, we get to do that to serve the, the youngest among us and the oldest. Uh, we get to do that to serve uh, the people at the center of grace and, and at, at this campus. We get to do that to serve people all around our city and all around the world. All of that is such an incredible blessing. What we're asked is simply to build together and invest in what matters to us and then be ready to be amazed at the growth that God brings. So we as a church staff and, and me as a pastor, I'm inviting you this year to consider helping us take a step forward financially. Uh, for some of you, that may mean for the first time ever you're going to give, or maybe it's the first time you've ever filled out an intent to give card where, where you shared with us how it is that, that you could, uh, we could count on you financially in the year ahead. Maybe you give occasionally or sometimes, but, but this year you're going to say, I'll give regularly and you can count on me for this. For others, we've been a part of this community for a long time. Maybe you've been a long time giver and maybe helping us move forward financially is, is taking one step deeper, giving one step more so that we can continue to build together and see the ministry that God leads us into. Here's what we're going to do with that as we continue to build on this foundation. First of all, uh, we'd like to recognize and, and honor our staff who've worked tirelessly over the last 20 months, most of whom have reinvented their jobs at least once, uh, maybe twice, and most of whom have received uh, no raise in compensation in the midst of that time. Uh, we'd like to reinforce the technology that's continuing to grow so that we can move into our rapidly changing world uh, with confidence and be ready for a future that we don't yet know. We want to continue to help forge our youth and children's program as they're doing ministry differently in the midst of a pandemic and will continue in, in what I hope feels more like a post-pandemic world in the year ahead. Uh, we want to continue to invest in that. And we also want to want to continue to, to explore what it means for us to be better together with Common Grace and, and the traditional campus, uh, traditional worshiping folks all on one campus and what it means to represent and represent church and invite people to experience community together. That's what we're trying to build as we move into the year ahead. And it's going to take all of us. It's going to take you. In this work of discipleship, as Jesus talks about being hearers and doers, it's always a both and. We get to build together on the foundations that God has given, and we get to discern the future together that we move into. As we were talking about this sermon series, uh, I love that we ended up with this idea of puzzle pieces. And you can see that on the screen. You can see that in our branding. In fact, I'm even wearing puzzle socks as I record this. I love that because it invites us to think beyond um, two or three being better together. That's what I had in my mind. And then Naomi Allen shared this idea of what if it was puzzle pieces because it takes all of us together. It's not one or two or three or four or five or six. It's the whole thing that makes the picture, that makes the vision more clear, that allows us in to that future. I think that's so critically important friends. And I love that vision because it helps reiterate the, the point that every piece matters, that what you have to offer is imperative. And that if we are to move into the future that God has planned for us, if we are gonna to continue to, to build on that foundation, it's gonna take each one of us offering of ourselves to get to that place together. I believe that you can invest in this community uh, with confidence for the 160 year history we have, for the, the ways that we continue to serve our community and those most vulnerable around us, for the ways that we provide resources uh, to families of children and youth, uh, to older adults, that we walk with people through seasons of, of grief and that we invite all of the people along the spectrum to come and be a part of what God is doing in this place and to continue to grow in faith with intention. I want to end by saying this. Uh, really, the question for us is whether we'll make the quick and easy decision to let somebody else uh, invest, to let somebody else be a part of the building, to, to keep things at arm's length, to go back to that mission trip example, to, to sort of... Um, uh, cut corners. Are we going to do that or are we going to do the harder but better option to connect and to invest and to participate and to give of ourselves? Uh, the choice between those two options, the question of that 
is a question that we can only answer together. And so that's why we're reminding you in this season, as we plan financially for the year ahead, that every one of us, every piece matters. And we're inviting you to help us build on that strong foundation together. Let's take a few moments for reflection.